Today, I want to talk about how to handle things when life is just not giving you a break. Hey, race drivers, it's Enzo with the Race Driver Coach Show. Thanks for tuning in, for watching, for listening, however you're consuming this. Uh, we just got off the back of Monaco, Monaco race, and it's pretty much the jewel of our crown in F2 and F3 and the other Porsche and regional that's there. Um, it's, it means a lot because it's where you get to see drivers pushing themselves to the absolute limit in qualifying. The race, however, is always a bit boring, um, but qualifying is always a spectacle, um, kind of like Indy 500, if you saw that this weekend. And two week or last week when it was the qualifying session, everybody just putting everything on the line just for that pole position. Same as that. I love it. Everybody loves Monaco. It's just different atmosphere. And we look forward to it, even though it bit us in the ass again. I was with uh, Liam in the F2 and last year he won the sprint race and then got disqualified because he had the wrong setting on the steering wheel, which is the throttle map because I have a different throttle map for the start and then, they change it for the race, right? He had it in the wrong setting. It's no advantage. In fact, it made him stumble the start because the wrong map mapping was on the throttle. Anyway, he got thrown out of that one, which was a big kick in the teeth because every driver wants to win in Monaco as well as be there. It's, it's big for your career. So that hurt. That was still stinging. It was redemption. However, <laughs> he got pole position, lap of his life, but on the last corner, Drogovic hit the wall and pulled over, caused a yellow. Uh, Liam was nearly the next car. It was yellow, then green, and then yellow again. He thought I could stay flat out because the yellow had gone. No, you can't. Lap deleted, five grid penalty. You name it, they threw the book at him. Double penalty, actually. You're only supposed to get one. They gave us a double penalty, so both races were affected. Um, and that was a kick. And then the car broke down. So this video is kind of apt for what's happening at the minute. Plus, I've had um, quite a few questions of people saying, you know, I'm doing the right thing. I'm working as hard as I can, yet I'm still not getting any results. Please give me some advice. So it's all related. Now, going back to our week uh, season so far in the F2, the last seven races, we have got a total of four championship points out of seven races. So three of them, or four of them, actually, you get 25 points for winning. We got four. And we've had three mechanical failure DNFs. This is turmoil for any F2 driver, especially when they're on an F1 driver program. You can imagine the pressure, right? You're in an F1 driver program to bring the results because they see you as a potential for going all the way. However, each bad result puts a little bit more pressure on. You get seven in a row, you can imagine the kind of pressure that comes on for that. Even though, you, you know, he did every, pretty much everything right. On the Friday, he did a, a lap good enough for pole. A lot of people didn't really lift, you know, because it was a weird yellow flag right at the end of the lap. Um, but these things happen. And to pick yourself up from that and then compete at your best the next day, that's a skill. It's difficult to do. It takes mental conditioning. But that's what top race drivers have. They can be deeply depressed because they've just had some bad news like a disqualification or breakdown or something, you know, with the career. You know, Boshung's going through it at the minute. He's done his neck in and he couldn't even race. And that was his big, nearly home Grand Prix or race in F2. So it is difficult. You constantly in motorsport get in a kick in the teeth. It seems like it's every weekend. Carters that are watching this, you'll know that you've got the best piece of kit, you know the track, you're racing really well, but you get taken out left, right and centre all the time. It's hard to get on a run, a winning streak, even though you are ticking all the boxes and doing what you should. So it kind of, it can easily make you think that no matter how much effort I put in, no matter how good I am, it's still not making a difference. I'm still not progressing. I feel like I'm stuck. Well, I'd like to say, Welcome to life. It's like that. I'm afraid work ethic is really important, right? 
your talent, your skills, really important. Your everything, how you apply apply yourself, and the peripheral skills that you've got to your craft, how deep you go into it, all really important. But there's a lot of stuff that contributes to your results inside the car as a race driver, you know, as a as a singer, as a sports person in any sport, as an entrepreneur. Your bit is really important. But the other elements like blind luck, uh, timing, being in the right place, the right time, the actions of others, the industry as a whole, if it changes due to COVID or whatever, the situation changes, all these things that are kind of out of your control, they have their own say on whether you're going to get what you want out of life and out of your sport and out of your career. But instead of fighting that and getting depressed and worried about that, just accept that it's part of the game. It's like a big pie, a big cake, and there's lots of slices to it, things that need to be in place to make the cake full, which is a big result and what you want out of life. Yours is a big chunk. Your talent, skills, and everything is a huge, probably half the cake. But then there's other areas like the luck and all the, all the rest of it and actions of others that is going to influence your results. And sometimes you get in a run where that side's dominating way too often. You're getting bad luck after bad luck. You know, things happen all the time, stuff that you really can't influence, let alone control, and it hurts. But I want just to do this video because I've had a few questions on this. You know, like I said, Enzo, how do I, how do I move forward? I'm sure I'm doing the right things. I'm listening to what you say on the videos, but it's still not quite working. It, you've got to be relentless. Relentless, patient, and really focused on what you can control. This is big now, people. When you go to, I'm going to use racing as a complete metaphor because most of you watching this are race drivers, but you might not be. But when you're in a race situation, you do all the prep you can before you go to a race weekend, right? You do the simulator work with the race team. You do a track walk. You look back at videos of onboards. Um, you've been there before, so you go over your notes. If you made notes last time you were there and you watch races and you're pretty much pretty specced up on everything. So by the time you hit the track, the first lap after you've worn the tires up, you're pretty much there. You're within a second of what you're going to do the whole weekend. If the track stays the same. And, but sort of say, so is everybody else. That's what makes it competitive. So if you're within a second, then you're probably going to be in the top 15, which is good. And the rest of it, your knowledge of how to set up the car and how to communicate what you want from the car, how to adjust to the new grip level. These are all bits that get you to the very top. However, the other side of it, people not driving into you, people not getting in your way when it's a, a qualifying lap. So they hold you back. You're not getting slipstream when you need it to. Penalties, you know, stewards decisions, all that kind of stuff. OK, you might have created the, the stewards situation but all that sort of stuff has got a say in your results so i don't want you getting moody too moody i don't want you getting angry frustrated and start to give up hope because if you start to give up hope just because that other stuff is just taking a little bit of a hit right now and it's not giving you any love it's just like a roulette wheel right you got a roulette wheel you keep betting on black and, and you throw the ball and it keeps landing on red for a while like seven times six times eight times in a row it doesn't mean you give up. What you do is you pick up that ball and you keep throwing it until you get the black, until you get the one that you want. That is being relentless. That's what a sports person, a champion is like. They take so many hits. They miss so many shots. They miss so many races. They stall on the grid. They do all sorts of things that are within their control. Then you've got the other elements of everything out of your control. It all has to align in order for you to win. Skill alone won't cut it. Mindset alone won't cut it. Good luck doesn't really cut it either. You've got to have them all in place. And the performance of your car, if you're in motorsport, obviously you've got that to look after. It is difficult, but this is the challenge that you face. So if you're the person now that's trying to find sponsorship to race, you've asked 300 people, you're getting nothing. Okay, if you've asked 300 and you're getting nothing, what are you going to do? Are you going to keep doing what you're doing? Or are you going to take a look, review it, get some feedback, adjust how you're approaching these companies 
and then go again and see if that works in the next 300 times you talk to somebody or you sell. So there's an element of that as well. I'm doing what I can. I'm doing everything I can. But if you're still not getting the results, it's okay. Let's have a look at what I'm doing. Let's take a look, see if there's something I can change. Get feedback from experts, people that have done it before. And you get them to tell you, try this. So if you're, you're going towards a sponsor and you're just saying to them, a prospective sponsor, a company, and you're saying to them, I'm a race driver. I'm going to go to the top. Do you fancy joining the journey? That kind of thing. You're going to get 300 no's, but believe me, unless you're really, really lucky. But if you're going to a company saying, right, motorsport is finding clients and customers for companies in your region, the locals track or the championship, it's creating clients for companies, left, right and center. Companies just like yours. Can I show you how they're doing it? Just that kind of approach to somebody who owns a company will be like, okay, tell me more. Because all they want to hear is I can get more clients. And if I can use motorsport, which is quite a cool sport that I like, so that's what they're thinking. Yeah, I want to hear more. Just a slight shift in what you've told them. It's not even important, really, that you're racing. It's just important that you've got the, the door to motorsport to give them more clients. So you change your proposal to come from that angle. All of a sudden, you will get people phoning back for a meeting. And that's just a simple adjustment. So if you're really striving to create something in your career or in the race weekend, and you're doing what you think is right, but you're still not getting the results after a long time, that might not be the other part of the cake. That might not be just luck and timing and things like and other people's actions. It might actually be the way you're asking, the way you're approaching things, the way you're training is not working. So there's two sides of it. The first side is just understand that there's other elements to the equation of creating a result that you can't control. Accept them. Know they're going to happen. Sometimes you'll have a horrible run of a whole year of bad results, not being your fault, but you've got to stay true to yourself, stay faithful, keep working because it will turn around. However, if it's going on too long or you've got a little sneaky suspicion that you're doing things wrong or something's not right, review what you're doing, change your approach and go again and see what that's like. Give it this similar amount of time to see if it works. Two strategies there, very simple. I haven't really gone that deep. I just touched the surface, but you can pretty much start to get an idea. That's two strategies for how to move forward when you feel stuck, but yet you feel like you're doing what you should be doing. Life will always test you. The universe is watching you right now or whoever it is that's in control. I just like to think this, you know, you like to, I like to believe things that are quite, quite wacky, but get me to perform better. Somebody's watching you. They want you to prove that you deserve the shot that you really desire. So if you're doing the right thing, and you are actually doing the right thing, you're working well, you've got the right mindset, you're controlling your emotions, you've got the right skills, but it's not happening. Be patient. Things take 10 years sometimes before you get just a little bit of um, progress, but then it takes off. Very often that happens. But if you're doing something and it's really not, it's taking way too long now, it's like, and this is really not happening. I'm getting nothing. Take a look at what you're doing, review it, get some feedback and change your approach. Experiment. It's just like when you come into a corner, right? As a race driver, you know the line, you know exactly when to brake, you know when to put the power, you know where you want to be to the exit. Perfect. That's working. But if it rains and you're just trying to stick to that line, you know, the situation change, COVID changes in the real world, but you're still trying to take your dry line, might not work. Now you've got to experiment, try breaking earlier, try breaking later, take a wider line, take a tighter line, use the curb on the, on the apex to see if that rotates the car, get the wheel straighter before you put the power on, all these things, right? So I'm using a corner now as a metaphor for life, but it's a case of, right, I'm going to experiment and try different things if it's really not working. I can see other people doing it, and I'm not. All in all, life is tough. You can do the right thing, but it won't give you what you want. It's up to you to decide, am I doing the right thing and keep going, or shall I take a look at what I'm doing, change, and go again and measure it? The decision's yours, but this can be life-changing. It just don't give up.
That's the big message. Don't give up on your career, even if it's kicking you in the teeth right now. I hope this helps. See you next time.